Today we are actually going to create a JPA repository. So, and it's going to be really easy. So in the previous tutorial, we created the student class and that is uh, the class that we actually will represent the entity uh, to represent each object of this class represent a record in the database. And we are not going to actually write any query or any stored procedures or even uh, any uh, crude methods that is the basic ones we are not going to write them they are they are created for us automatically by the uh, jpa uh, spring data jpa i'd like to remind you subscribe to my channel by clicking on the red subscribe button below this video in that way you will enable me or uh, motivate me to continue making these lessons and also you get notified when you when i make new lessons if you have any challenge following these lessons please look at the procedure uh, in the website, my website, kindsandthegenius.com slash springboot. So you get all the procedures because this is a procedure-based lesson, so all the procedures and the code snippets are here for you. All right, so let's get started. What is JPA repository? We've explained this in the, in the previous lesson, but just a reminder, a JPA repository contains uh, the, the methods, the codes you, that is needed to manage access to database, to save, to get, to delete, and to update. What you need to manage data access is provided by JPA repository. JPA means Java Persistence API, all right? Now, the first thing we want to do is to configure the entity. So we want to tell Spring Boot that the, 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 the student class is actually going to represent a table in the database. So we have a student class we've created uh, using uh, Pojo, uh, as you can see here. So what it means is that each of these represents a column. So in student table, we have ID, we have name and department. We are going to tell um, uh, JPA that this student class, uh, each object of the student class represents a record in the database and this student represents an entity which actually is a table or a record set. So to do that, you simply annotate, because I mentioned it here. Uh, so to achieve that, we add the at entity annotation to the student class. So simply say, <coughs> let me just uh, take a little water, please. So, simply say at uh, entity, <coughs> okay, so uh, come here and say import from Java, Java access persistence of entity. <coughs> the next thing you want to do is to tell, <coughs> is to tell uh, JPA that there's a primary key and the primary key is the ID. So, simply say Annotate it, annotate the ID field with the ID annotation. Again, it's coming from the Java Access Persistence, that ID. All right, so at this point, we've configured our entity. So this class now represents an entity of which the object of this class represents a record in the database, whereas this class represents a table in the database. So there is a complete uh, class now for the student, so you can copy it if you want, but it's better you type out this yourself. All right, now we need to create the student repository. This will be created as an interface. It will extend the crude repository. Uh, now this crude repository is a typo, so it's C-R-U-D, create, read, update, and delete repository. So it will create this JPA repository where we are going to create student repository is going to extend the crude repository. The reason is because many of the methods, basic methods we need, like select, insert, uh, delete, they are provided in the crude repository interface that is already existing uh, in JPA repository, in the, in the, in the JPA API. So, we simply extend it. If we extend it, then we have this method. For instance, get find all, get by ID, delete, and so on. So these are provided in the crude repository. So we have to extend it so that we have this method available for us. So uh, we are going to first add a repository. So I'm going to shift this 
and I'm going to right click and say new this time I'll just go ahead to choose interface and I'm going to call it student repository okay All right so uh, I can say extend and, and write something here but I want to I want you to be able to follow this easily so We've created a student repository and I'm now I'm going to make it extend crude repository. So I'm going to say extend crude repository. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to save and I'm going to come here and it says import crude repository from or the spring framework, the data that repository, and that is fine. So where are we? So okay, fine. So now we've created a repository and we've created our configured our entity so we are good to go now and I'm going to now show you how to use this method to be able to get data update insert and delete data. I'd like to thank you for viewing and we'll see you in the next lesson.